Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. China's chip industry has just thrown out its trump card, Peking University's Peng Hai Lin and Chiu Cheng Wang team have created the world's first two-dimensional low-power gaffet transistor, directly crushing Intel and TSMC. This thing is 40% faster than a 3-nanometer silicon-based chip and consumes 10% less power, which is equivalent to driving AJ-20 but only burning 92-grade gasoline. Today we will uncover the technical inside story of this chip nuclear bomb and see how Chinese scientists use atomic level operations to rewrite the global semiconductor landscape. On March 14th, the cover of Nature Materials was a bomb. The Peking University team used bismuth-based two-dimensional semiconductors to create a ring gate transistor with a channel thickness of 1.2 nanometers, which is 80,000 times thinner than a hair, and a gate dielectric as thin as 0.28 nanometers, directly breaking through the physical limits of silicon-based chips. Do you know how abnormal this is? TSMC's 3 nanometer chip is still using a fin structure, but Peking University has already mastered the atomic level overpass. The gate surrounds the semiconductor channel 360 degrees. The electrons run faster than bolt, but the leakage is less than that of Japan's nuclear wastewater. What's even more amazing is the wafer level three dimensional stacking which is equivalent to building a hundred-story skyscraper on the fingernail. This operation is more hardcore than using embroidery needles to carve a miniature forbidden city. The key killer is the material. Peking University's original bismuth oxide selenium, Biosa, the carrier mobility, is 280 square centimeters per vs, which is three times higher than silicon materials. The key is that this thing is China's exclusive skill. 70% of the world's bismuth mines are in China, and the output accounts for 74%, which is a strategic nuclear raw material. On the other hand, the silicon-based materials used by TSMC have a 30% drop in carrier mobility below 10 nanometers, which is like asking Liu Xiong to run hurdles in slippers. What's even more amazing is that Peking University has played with bismuth-based materials and high oxides, and the interface defect density has been reduced to 2 times 1 0 to the power of 1 to the power of 1 cm squared, which is two orders of magnitude lower than similar overseas technologies. This accuracy is equivalent to hitting 10 rings in a row on the top of the Himalayas. The measured data is beyond the reach of foreign companies. Under the same operating voltage, the Peking University chip has a driving current of 1135 microamperes a micrometer, which is three blocks away from Samsung's Mugfet. The contact resistance is 123 omega times m, which directly reaches the quantum limit and is 10 times stronger than Intel's silicon-based chip with tungsten contact. Even more fierce is the power consumption, running the same algorithm, the Peking University chip consumes only 90% of the energy, which is equivalent to putting an i9 processor into an old phone to run the score. Experts from the Belgian Microelectronics Center, IMEC, tweeted overnight, 
This thing has given Moore's law an extra 10 years of breathing. How deadly is this technology? The United States just announced on March 18 that it would expand its ban on chip equipment from China, and then it was slapped in the face by Peking University. You should know that 77% of the world's 5G base stations and 92% of photovoltaic inverters use Chinese chips. If they are replaced with this two-dimensional gaffet, American EDA software will be laid off collectively. Our quantum design platform plus Beda nanolithography can create a 3D stacked chip aircraft carrier in minutes. What's more terrifying is that the lifeline of bismuth or is in China's hands. Biden is probably regretting it now. Why didn't he think of putting this metal on export control back then? Let's see how the West responds. TSMC restarted one nanometer research and development overnight, but found that it had to use indium phosphide, which has less global reserves than pandas. Intel spent $20 billion on GAA, but the gate dielectric thickness was stuck at 0.5 nanometers and couldn't go down. Samsung is even funnier. After three years of boasting about surround gate, Peking University directly came up with a three-dimensional stacking mass production plan. In contrast, Huawei has already obtained the first batch of samples in China, and its flagship machine in 2026 will use Peking University Core. This plot is more sci-fi than the wandering earth. From choking the neck to strangling the throat, Peking University's operation has taught 1.4 billion people a hardcore lesson when the West is still stuck in traffic on the silicon-based track, Chinese scientists have already driven a two-dimensional supercar to change lanes and race. Anyone who dares to brag about chip hegemony is undoubtedly asking for trouble. The bismuth-based revolution that can cause TSMC's stock price to melt down in half an hour is the subversive invention of the 21st century. What do you think of this?